Studios, and welcome to the 1990 Thames Snooker Classic. A different name for this, the sixth year of the tournament, and a different sponsor as well, but the same tried and trusted formula as before. The top club players from all over the southeast of England competing for the William Hill Trophy, a first prize of £2,500, and of course the chance of doubling that by achieving the improbable victory over the world champion Steve Davis. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome him, Steve Davis. <laughs> this is becoming a regular thing here, and each year, Steve, we talk about how the standard of club players has improved. What do we say now? Well, I think now we've got to realise that for, for snooker it's been 10 years of maximum exposure and the standard has risen so high that the players you'll be seeing over the next couple of days will be professional standard if not uh, very close to that and that is just reflection on, on how the game has succeeded. One of them's only 14. That's right and, and it just, <laughs> just goes to show if you see enough snooker on the television uh, what you can achieve very early on. I wasn't even playing at 14. So. Were you thinking about snooker at 14? Um, no, I think I was probably trying to get through some sort of exam. <laughs> <laughs> and just as an added uh, impetus in case the players need this, Brian Morgan, who appeared in this event for three years, didn't actually do that well, but is now a professional. And in his first year, he's reached the quarterfinal of two ranking events, and you've knocked him out. But he's not done badly. Well, Brian Morgan's had a fantastic year. Uh, didn't do too great in this, in this tournament, but just proven how good the players were that won. Um, and he has, in his first year as a professional, had an extremely good year and, and can use that as a springboard. Is it easy to become a pro? Um, no, it's not easy. Uh, in, in many ways at the moment, it's a slightly closed shop as far as I'm concerned. And some of the players you're seeing over the next couple of days should really be professionals now. And um, hopefully in, in the 90s, the game will open up and there will be more professionals allowed to play. Lovely. Thanks very much, Steve. The world champion, you'll be seeing him a little later. In a few moments, it's the quarterfinals then, and a little treat for you later on in the programme, when our two celebrity golfers, Ian Wooster and Sam Torrance, come face to face across the Green Bays. Tomorrow is the semi-finals and a confrontation between the two best lady players in the world. That's Alison Fisher and Anne-Marie Farron. And then on Wednesday, the climax of the Thames Snooker Classic, the final, £2,500, remember, and the William Hill Trophy at stake, and of course the challenge match against Steve Davis. But let's get underway now with the serious stuff. And there was a record entry this year of more than 2,000 players from 125 clubs across the home counties. That's been whittled down to the last eight. So without more ado, let's meet the first two quarterfinalists, shall we? The opening match involves two players of contrasting styles but some similar achievements. Ronnie O'Sullivan from Ilford is the youngest of the eight qualifiers, only 14. He's already the British under-16 champion with the highest break of 137 to his name. Ten years his senior, Steve Bentham from Mitcham was also a very successful teenager, winning the same under-16 title and becoming the youngest ever England amateur international. He also reached this stage of the tournament in 1986. It's just one frame, remember. Len Ganley, the referee. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. And the commentators, John Pullman and Steve Davis. So the fourth and last quarter-final match gets underway, and to break off, 14-year-old Ronnie O'Sullivan, <coughs> a schoolboy from Ilford. <coughs> and his opponent, 10 years his senior, Steve Bentham. Steve from Mitcham. shot there from Ronnie O'Sullivan, 14 years of age, studying at school at the moment, advanced positional play. Eight. Tremendously exciting prospect, been on the scene for a, three or four years now, and uh, most of the players know about the 
capabilities of this young lad, but Steve Ventham, his opponent, no slouch either. No. Both these players would have been a bit upset that they drew each other in the first round amongst the favourites for this Snooker Classic this year, the William Hill. Sullivan. Well, this is the first 22. time I've ever seen this young man, Steve, and already I'm terribly impressed. 23. That's right, he doesn't really look like a 14-year-old at all, does he? He certainly doesn't. He's a, a very mature player, although he's only 14 years of age. <coughs> and tremendous cue power this young lad has got. Without hitting the ball hard, he gets tremendous screw into the cue ball, and that can only mean that he's got perfect timing on the shot. between 50 and 75 gets a pound a point. And like Johnny Walker, still going strong. 56. every moment of this, I'm sure. a name for the future and I'm sure you're very excited at home as well as we are here probably the highest break we've ever seen in the Cockney Classic I'm not too sure so goes into the next bracket now any any no oh, not quite actually just one point short should he progress further he starts to go into two points two pounds per point a break from 76 to 100 qualifies for two pounds per point he didn't quite make that, but what a fantastic start from this young man. Leading by 75 points to know. And a possible 59 on the table. Well, that was the end of the match as a contest. A few moments later, young Ronnie was wrapping it all up in some style. Steve Ventham without a single point to his name. 18. Ronnie 
Sullivan who goes through to the semi-final. Well, here comes Dad, Ronnie Senior. His <laughs> dad's a good snooker player, he's a good hurdler. That was a tremendous performance. Ronnie Junior, first of all. Are you really only 14? Yeah. <laughs> Just six weeks ago, I'm 14. <laughs> <laughs> You, you might have a valuable property on your hands here, might you? Yeah, I hope so, yeah. How, how, did, how did it all start? Playing snooker? Uh, he bought me a table for Christmas and I just started from there. How old were you then? About three? No, seven. <laughs> seven? Seven? Yeah. And you've been watching it on television over yeah. the years. Who's, who's your idol? Steve Davis. Uh, I thought you might say that. You, when he said when he was 14, he wasn't even thinking about snooker. He was taking his exams. That's what I'm doing at the moment. Are you? Yeah, just prepared to exams. Are you really? Yeah. It's not a misspent youth then. You're not spending all your time at no, the table. No. Finish school first and then play snooker. Second. Very laudable. Dad, stop running away. Come here. I know you're a bit shy. <laughs> Tell me, when did you realise he might be a good snooker player? When he was baiting me. <laughs> You're pretty useful yourself, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I was playing for a few quid, he was saying a few quid up mainly. And I turned it in there. <laughs> no nerves about being on television? No. As long as Dad isn't sitting in the front row, that's right. Yeah. You don't like that. <laughs> so Dad knows his place and uh, yeah. you certainly seem to know yours, Ronnie. Well done. Thanks. <laughs> Happy family all round. Ronnie Senior flushed with pride, and Junior assured of a semi.